morning guys, Tammy Trier, TrierWilderness.com. I am a day late and I apologize. I happened to be on the road yesterday and had all the intentions and everything ready to go and I just wasn't able to. So we are here today. It's Thursday so I'm not sure if I will have an audience with me today or not so if you are watching this on the replay or on YouTube Please feel free to comment, leave your, com your comments, your questions, your thoughts. Love hearing from you. Love being able to communicate with you. So I am going to just wait a few minutes here and see if we get anybody joining us. But I have a neat topic today, I think, something that's going to help a lot of you. It was inspired from last week's um, questioning and comments. Uh, Jill shared some information, and after thinking about it, um, after the uh, live video, I decided to focus on that this week. Um, I can see some people are joining me, so that's awesome. And uh, today we're going to talk about how to find your joy. You know, we've talked about needing to find your joy, but, you know, it's kind of hard. Some people just don't understand what's involved in and and some of the things that could be keeping you from finding your joy and also um, just enjoying your life, um, enjoying your accomplishments, being proud of who you are, all those things, you know, are the, the things that hold us back. And I'm going to kind of sort of go on a bunny trail here. I was blessed with a book um, last week. My wonderful, beautiful friend Rachel sent me a cookbook. And I will share that with you here. It is called A Better Way to Healthy. And this is by Cindy Mullet. And what an awesome, awesome cookbook. You ladies out there, Shelly, you're going to want to get this. Um, you can find her books by going to treyerwilderness.com slash Cindy Mullet. It's in the description below, so check it out. But this was... This was a blessing in a multitude of ways. One, I was very grateful to receive it. Rachel is a dear, dear friend of mine and also the m mama of Mountain Ben. And I thank her very much for sharing him with us because he is such a treasure. He is like my second son. And um, we just have such a unique friendship and I'm so grateful for it. So those are things that can bring you joy, guys. And also, it's so priceless to have friends like that, friends that you can, you know, through your struggles, you may not have spoken for a while, but you can contact them and you guys will pick up right where you left off and be able to just be there for each other. Prayer warriors for one another, you know, it's just, it's a priceless thing when you have a true friendship and I am very grateful to have a multitude of those and I'm just so thankful for them. And Rachel is one of them. But this book has amazing recipes in it. They have a lot of um, allergies and dietary adjustments that needed to be made. And this book has a lot of recipes that will work for my diet. And I am so excited because they look absolutely amazing. Good morning, Chad. But there's another reason that this book was amazing to me. Um, there are also um, some interesting health issues that were dealt with and some of the um, protocols were shared in this book and um, I think that that will help many of you also. And additionally, this family has a unique story and there are two other books that were written um, by this family. Um, I just blanked on the one. I have to think about it. I'll, I'll mention them then. Um, but you can find the link to her books. You'll find them all. It's called The Big Mountain, Bigger God. And then I'm a winner either way. And uh, it's Death Zero, Austin One. And that is a uh, book written by them as a family as well as their 16-year-old who is now in heaven. And um, Talk about inspiring, talk about eye-opening, talk about kicking the pants. It's a great book, guys. Good morning, Michelle. So I highly encourage this cookbook. This has recipes for all families. This is not just special diet recipes, but it has a lot of 
great special diet recipes in here. There is some really great coffee cakes uh, that I can have. I'm so excited. And there is a sticky bun cake that I can't even describe to you. I can't wait to make it. I, I go through the book and I want to make them all in one day. But what I want to focus on today, I wanted to share that book because I know Shelly and some of you out there can use it. And um, this is the one I want to focus on today. This was a divine intervention, if you will. Um, again, I'm a winner either way, and that's death zero and Austin one. And notice at the top, it's Austin one, W-O-N, not O-N-E. Okay. Um, what's really cool is I love divine intervention. First of all, I got this. Through this book, I got some interesting protocol ideas. Um, second of all, or third of all, I can't count this morning. I'm not feeling 100%, so bear with me. Um, I was compelled to get this book and check it out. And um, it fits perfectly with my thoughts for today, um, which had already been formulated. But this is one empowering book. Jill, I highly recommend that you get this book. Chad, awesome, awesome book. I think you will thoroughly enjoy it. And all of you out there, really. But um, just some of the things that we've been talking about over the last couple of weeks um, really made me think of some of you. So I wanted to point that out. Um, so now let's talk about this. How do you find your joy? And why is your joy missing in the first place? First of all, let me ask you this. Does your life suck? Sometimes mine does. I mean, I'll be honest. It's a, it sucks sometimes. Um, are you feeling numb or maybe useless? That happens to all of us, I think, going through different periods of time. I felt useless when I was sick. Um, numb is a, a, a good emotion that we tend to go through when we're in a valley or when we're stuck, and we all get stuck. Sometimes we don't know it. Cutting in and out on my end. Oh, bummer. All right, well... I don't know. I will see what I can do, Chad. Thanks for sharing. Okay. Oh, let's see here. Also, um, when you complete a project, um, is there no excitement for you? Is there, you know, when good things happen in your life, is the excitement missing? Jill mentioned that last week, and that's what, and thank you, Jill, that is what made me focus on this week's topic. Um, like I've always mentioned, we tend to be hard on ourselves. We tend to have bigger expectations guys for ourselves than we do anybody else often those expectations are of others too and we set our expectations so high that we're disappointed have you ever considered that have you ever considered that you're expecting more of yourself than you're physically able I will be honest I have not been practicing what I preach good morning Deb I have been pushing myself and yesterday I spent the day in the big city and uh, although I don't like the city I had a great time I had great company I took a client out vanity and flooring shopping and I intended to meet with you guys but it didn't work out that way so today is a good day but I woke up this morning feeling really crummy and I felt really crummy when I got home last night when I finally just sat still and I could feel that coming on the day before so um, I got to learn to listen to my body again because I know better than to do this because when it starts setting in, I should be laying flat, I should be resting, and instead I kept pushing. And uh, not wise in my condition because now my body is really, really fighting me. Uh, so we need to listen to our bodies and we need to um, pay attention to the expectations that we have for ourselves because it's really sad. Our expectations are set so high sometimes that when we excel and when we do amazing things, we still don't see it. I witnessed that with some with with uh, people around me, and I, I see that, and it, it breaks my heart because uh, they have amazing abilities, they do amazing things, but they just don't see it. And I hear it coming from you guys, and. We gotta kick away expectations. Honestly, I, I experienced this uh, about nine or 10 years ago, and I just learned that life is so much sweeter when you don't have any expectations. Do you realize that when you don't have any expectations, life is a surprise? How cool is that? 
And we eliminate disappointment, we eliminate frustration, we eliminate self-abuse because we are beating ourselves up all the time, okay? So I want to read a little bit about um, some things that I pulled out of the, out of the book. Um, for starters, um, your joy and your happiness, they will return and when they do, you will have that sense of uh, satisfaction and accomplishment and that's what you want to strive for. You want to feel that feeling. You don't want to be numb to it and you don't want to keep beating yourself up. It's just such a bad place to be. Now, as you guys all know, my motto is um, that I focus on the good in life. And I thought this was really cool. This is taken from the book, I'm a Winner Either Way, Death One, Austin, or, sorry, yeah, Death, Death One, Austin One. Um, why focus on all the things that are going wrong when you can focus on so many things that are going great? That is from a 16. Aha. Okay. Perseverance pays off. Okay. I think I, I, we were in and out and why I just was spinning. I think we should be good now. The mountain boy was doing um, some stuff on the internet. So I think we're good now. Hopefully you guys heard that. Um, the next thing that Austin said in the book <clears throat> If you think about it, life is all about boundaries. Someone has said that 90% of life consists of things we can neither control nor change. If this is true, it means that we can control, alter, or change our circumstances or condition only 10% of the time. Okay? One reason so many people are unhappy and dissatisfied in life is that they spend all their time butting their heads against the 90% that they can't change while ignoring the 10% that they can. That is so insightful. Guys, you need to realize this is a kid that is 16 years old. He was homeschooled. He comes from a very strong Christian family. And talk about empowering and amazing insight. You know, this kid spent his whole life ill. Um, from infant on up, he needed uh, a heart transplant. He then went through two bouts of cancer at the age of six and seven. And at 15, ended up having to seek a new heart because his heart was failing. And then passed away at 16. So, guys, this is, this is powerful stuff coming from somebody who lived an extremely rough life, being poked and prodded and going through all kinds of procedures and near-death experiences a multitude of times. And what's really crazy is he has um, an, a sibling that had the same uh, deficiency with the heart. So it's really, really crazy. This family is amazing, though, the way they look at the positive. And, you know, sometimes we need those um, examples to remind us, you know. I, I hate getting in a woe is me state. We get there sometimes. You have to realize that's the enemy setting in. And that's why it's so important that we focus on the positive and that we focus on regaining our joy. Because when you have joy, it gives the enemy less opportunity to get in there. But this is just, it was just amazing to me reading the story. I think I have one more chapter. Or well, I have like a, a quarter of the book to go. And it's hard putting it down. Uh, his thoughts on his journey are that he savored the journey that he was on. And what have I been saying to you guys all these weeks is that it's so important to be content in where you're at at the moment because God takes us through all kinds of different valleys and all kinds of different experiences to enrich our lives. And it's a choice to look at it as a woe is me, why me, why is God doing this to me, if there's a God, why isn't he taking care of me? It's it's what can I learn from it and, and why am I here? And how can I better myself? And boy, on the other side, it's going to be so much better. And it's so important. And I find that I myself have learned to really settle in with where God has me because I go through things all the time. Right now, I'm actually pushing a lot of silicone through my body, through my detox. And it's it's rough on the body. And... It, it can be rough on, on, on the soul too, our spirit, because, you know, we, we end up being really good and then all of a sudden we're in a different place again. So those ups and downs can be, be hard, but I'm looking also at the bright side that I'm, I'm healing and I'm, I'm progressing and that's, you know, so it's how and what you see in your circumstances. One of the things too, he said, is he saw life that he had two choices. One, he could dwell on his limitations 
butting my head against the 90% that I could not change, get frustrated, discouraged, angry, and bitter, and make my life miserable, and those around me, actually, you think about that, I'm adding that, when you're miserable, you make the people around you miserable, and and that's something that we got to remember, I don't want to make people around me miserable, I want to make people around me happy, and, and that's what I strive for, so, um, or he said, on the other hand, I could focus on finding ways to make the most of life within my limitations, so it's, it's so important, he's teaching and growing people in seasons, yes, yeah, and we need to. Um, like I said, this young man is in heaven now, but I would love to see you guys purchase this book to pass on his legacy because his goal in life was to be able to reach people for Christ. And his book is very powerful um, for the non-believer and the believer. So, you know, I encourage you to check it out and, and spread the word. Um, and you can find his book by going directly to uh, Win Winner Either Way. Um, also... I, I just, I feel that our biggest thing is our, ex there we go again. Okay, so I, I really feel that the thing we need to foco focus on this week is the expectations we have set on ourselves as well as on others. You know, um, pay attention to what, what, where your disappointments come from. Okay, because, you know, when you when you accomplish something and, and you've worked really hard at it and and you've hit the end of that, you should be excited and you should be proud of it. And um, if you're not feeling that, look at the expectations you're setting for yourself. You know, if you think you should have done it sooner or better or whatever, you know, you got to look at people like um, the owner of Chick-fil-A, um, Thomas Edison, uh, all, all, all the big achievers in our in our world, you know, they didn't they didn't find that achievement overnight. They had to work hard. I forget how many failures the owner of Chick Fil A had, but it was insane. It was insane amounts, and he never gave up. So, you know, guys, focus heavy on the positive and get rid of the expectations. Seriously, I mean, you don't even expectations could be good if you if. If you reined them in, if you harnessed them, if you didn't, you know, find your disappointment from them. But I, like I said, I learned about 10 years ago to just zap expectation and zap expectation of other people too, because you can't control how other people think, how other people feel, how other people perceive things. So I want to touch on that a little bit too, because last week when we were talking about um, illness came up. You know, when you're dealing with illness and it's a hidden illness where the, you, you, know, you physically can't see the illness that's eating you up from inside, which is a little bit with what, you know, with what I'm suffering with, if my family wouldn't have seen, you know, the things they have, they'd probably feel the same way as um, some of you were experiencing. But it's hard when you have people close to you that, you know, think you're sucking it, you know, that you're, you're playing the game and, and that you're really not sick and stuff you got to look past that and what we've got to focus on is where our happiness is are you content with where you're at because you know you can't change it then be okay with that and if someone else is not okay with that that's honestly their struggle that's not your struggle however I will admit and I know it plays a hard role role on the heart and your spirit and your soul and and that could be really hard so it's a process being happy with where you are and focusing strictly on that when you have negativity coming in from people maybe closest to you. So I'm gonna I'm just encouraging you on that because it's a hard place to be. I know that. Um, my direct family here doesn't do that to me, but my biological family tends to do that to me, and um, it can be really really hard because you. You crave their support and you don't understand their negativity. So I, I know I know where you're at. I know what you're dealing with, and um, I, I I pray for you guys for that. When I see you guys mention that, I know how hard that is. But the thing is, we got to learn to focus on God. We need to learn to focus on what we can control. We need to focus on no expectations, and we need to be happy with where we're at, and and notice our milestones. Uh, 
no matter how little they are and be really content with them because milestones are milestones no matter the size. You hear me say that all the time. Uh, so really, really focus on that stuff, guys. How, how do you guys feel on these topics? How, um, any insight that you'd like to share? And also always every week, guys, share with me, you know, if you feel there's something that I could expand on, um, share about, uh, do a new topic, please, please share that with me because I love to be able to feed your needs. So uh, don't be afraid to hesitate a, a topic for another another live video because like I said, I'm going to do these every Wednesday and if I can continue to help people on certain areas, certain topics, it is my pleasure. Um, so I hope you guys are gaining things from these every week. Uh, sometimes I feel like I'm rambling. Sometimes I feel like I nail it, you know, so I don't know, but I, I know what's on my heart. And I know what I see around me is a lot of hurting and struggling people. And I want to be able to, to change that because I know I've been in those places myself. I know what I've used to get out of those places. I know what, where my strength comes from. I know where my happiness comes from. I know where my joy is at. And I know that if I lose it, I know how to find it. And, um, you know, guys, sometimes if you're feeling stuck, Especially you ladies. I don't know if this applies to you guys, but Chad, you can let me know. When when you're feeling like you're stuck and in a weird spot, I've, I'm, I, I, I have to admit, my name is Tammy and I'm a doily junkie. I, I love linens. <laughs> so I have three old suitcases that I store all my tablecloths and linens and things in. And I use them for curtains and I use them for uh, cupboard doors, if you will, in my kitchen. You guys have seen my kitchen. So... Sometimes just simply rearranging things, placing things different, moving things around, decluttering especially, um, getting rid of things, gifting somebody with things, um, all those little things can make such a big difference. But in your surroundings, if you can alter your surroundings some, it's amazing how much of a simple pleasure that can add to your, your day, you know, um, doing a craft, doing something you enjoy doing, sitting down and reading a book. And I really encourage you guys to pick up books. Books are a really good tool for, for altering your mood. So is music. Okay, guys. So, and I love, uh, Positive Life Radio. Um, there's some great apps. Next week I will share those resources with you. I didn't think of that till now, but I have some great apps that I go to, um, that, provide me with really good stations and I've started formulating my own on um I just went blank I'll think of it um Pandora I started my own channel on Pandora on Pandora and I will share that with you guys next week also if you want to you know listen into what I'm listening to um so anyway these were my thoughts for today I hope they have helped you I'm going to end this with a quick quick Okay, like I said, I'm not feeling right, and my tongue and my brain are not cooperating together, but hopefully through the end of this it will. I'm going to say a quick prayer for you guys. And Chad just posted on here topic, understand how and why the enemy speaks to us and how we can push him away so we can enjoy life and let God and Jesus rule over us. Awesome. You got it. I would love to because I've found some great tools for that. Um, so yes, I will share that. But dear Jesus, I just come to you today and I ask that you just wrap your loving arms around my audience and just love on them, help them as they struggle and, and go through life, help them to get rid of their expectations, both in them, their, themselves and the people closest to them and just love their life, find their joy, find you if they haven't. And definitely to check out this book, What an Insightful Young Man and Family, and I know that everybody can gain from it. And Lord, just thank you for blessing me with the tools. Bless Rachel for blessing me with these amazing divine opportunities to share. And Lord, I just ask that you strengthen everybody and bless their day. And Lord, thank you, and I ask this in Jesus' precious name. Guys, love you all. Thank you for taking time out of your busy day uh, to, to join me. And uh, Holly, love you too, and thank you. I appreciate that. 